Welcome back. So just another quick video in the debugging vein. Well, I think about while well, I think of it. So I have my program here. Things are pretty well coded up. I'm ready to go. I'll give this a shot. And I'm just not seeing what I would expect to, although performance is pretty good. So this is tricky, right? How do we debug something that's on the GPU? Well, sort of the industry standard way of doing this is to use a tool. Um, one of the most popular is RenderDoc. Just go ahead and open this up here. So I have RenderDoc. But as you can see here, RenderDoc is for launching executables. It launches an executable, captures a frame, we get some info. This is not an executable. It's a Python program. Um, so maybe, again, maybe this is just super obvious and super silly, but I felt good when I worked this out. So what we can do is instead of running this program up here, we can launch Python and then give it the name of the file that we want to run. So just run that. And that's an alternate way of running the program. And that's actually how I'm going to launch RenderDoc. So the basic idea is the executable path will be the path to Python. And this is sort of a nightmare sort of a nightmare to, to find this. So what I do is I just search for Python as my app and I just open the file location and then I open somewhere and that's a, a shortcut. So I go ahead and open that again. Okay, this is my python.exe. So I'll just grab this. Okay, cool. I will have to change the working directory because I want to run it basically from this folder. So I'll just click in, find my root folder that I'm running everything from, select that. And then I need to specify a command line argument. So the command line argument is basically the extra argument here. So this main.py. So I'm basically saying, hey, run this Python exe, run it sort of with this folder in mind, and I want you to run main.py. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch that. And here we can see our program just the same as before, and we'll just hit F12 to capture a frame. There we have a frame there, we can close the program down now. All right, now it loads this capture up for us, and this is where the fun begins. So we have a bunch of different options here. We can go to resource inspector and here we can see all of these resources which are bound. Um, so for instance, double click on a buffer and it says here, yeah, this is a shader storage buffer, has some info about it because my engine under the hood is doing a bunch of reallocations. So that's why all this uh, buffer sub data is being called anyway. Maybe this isn't super interesting, but let's go on with the issue of working out the problem with that program. So we pop over here, we have this color pass, all this, yeah, we see we have, um, we clear the screen, we do two instanced draw calls, no problem. Now we also can see for each instance draw call, sort of what the associated resource binds are, but let's go over here to this pipeline state and here we can see what is happening at each stage. So we can see our attributes and we can go ahead and inspect those. No problem. We can see the, the buffers. This is the vertex array. Yeah, the vertex array object, which is bound, all the attributes there. Anyway, I, I'm rambling on because it's fun. Okay, um, we can also see if we go to the vertex shader everything which is associated here, uniforms. So, hey, for instance, did we have a dodgy view uh, transform or projection? So let's click go, go into that. We have view and projection, and I can see from here, I'll just take it at its word that that is a valid number, like it'll do what it's meant to do. So, okay, no problem there. Now we also have the model transforms in this shader storage buffer object. Let's have a look at that. Uh oh, 
And here's the problem. See? So, because I have zero transforms, I'm taking every point, multiplying it by zero, of course it's not going to be visible. So, and we can go on and, and have a look at everything else. We can even see the way the rasterizer is, is set up. And we can see our various textures, which are bound. It's just a very cool thing. And I'm happy that I got it working with Python, but... Long story short, I'm, I'm basically replicating an error that I debugged a second ago. Um, I need to remember to upload our, um, our buffer. So yeah, a bit of a silly case here, because it's changed the one line, and now the thing is working. But yeah, no, I just, just take it as a, um, an opportunity to really state the importance of, of render doc. If I was, yeah, if I was learning again, I would use render doc a hundred percent and I should definitely use it more in my tutorials, but yeah. So there we have it. That was a little tour through render doc, by the way, by the way, this is a little prototype that I'm working up with my game framework. It's not an engine. It's a framework. You might be looking at this and saying, hey, in your data-oriented design, you made a tutorial that had a higher frame rate than this. What's the deal? Well, this isn't the final form. The final form for this will actually be doing minimal work on the CPU. It'll be updating all of these positions and rotations and things on the GPU directly. And I'm super psyched to see how that turns out. But anyway, I've talked enough. All right, so all the best. Have a good one and I'll see you soon. Bye.